God is good. Thank God for everything. All those who are here, those who are watching from home, I believe we are ready. Amen. You know, um, not to underestimate um, the presence of, of, of God here or anything, just to bring into memory that everything that we do, amen, we do it from a place of revelation and understanding of the power of God and the ability that God possesses. Hallelujah. So wherever anyone is, the anointing flows. I had a testimony, a couple of testimonies from last Friday. What if I the other Friday? Amen. Last Friday, actually, is when I had a couple of testimonies um, from people telling me a few things. And they were telling me that when they were in the house, the anointing was so powerful in the house. Amen. Someone told me that in the house and all of them were slain by the Holy Ghost. They were all slain on Friday, praying in the Spirit, just spying. So I just want to understand that this Whatever we are doing is real. Amen. We have to plug into the whatever the Holy Ghost is doing. Hallelujah. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we are useless. God is good. It's as simple as that. The supernatural power of God is what makes us different from the rest of the people that we know. And our belief in that power. And believe that that power, there's nothing the power of God cannot do. Don't have any part of your mind where you think there are things that you can do and there are things that God cannot do. You have to be willing in your mind and your spirit to understand that the Father can do everything. Hallelujah. God is good. And I want to teach about discerning of dreams tonight. And we will enter into the discerning of dreams. And I'll try to teach differently from what I taught once. But I'll teach again for those who were here that day in Prokmura and you're absent-minded. God is good. Hallelujah. There was still more world than Christ. Amen. <laughs> so right now there is more Christ than world hallelujah so we'll also touch on a bit of those things but understand why we're talking about dreams because dreams are a dimension in its own right and there are things I'll teach tonight which I wish because of time I'd be able to explain them further tonight but I won't be able to because of time I'm already aware of that so I will teach to the best of my ability tonight then we'll do the prayers tonight then we'll see what I'll teach again on Sunday to just cover up. But now the problem is I'm thinking about the mega weekend and the theme for the mega weekend. I'm looking at it. I'm thinking um, how we will put everything in. Hallelujah. So you're doing discerning of dreams. Very critical topic. Hallelujah. Because dreams are not just a mode of communication. Remember, dreams are a dimension in the spirit. Dreams are a dimension in the spirit. And so we are approaching this from it is our access to a particular dimension. Hallelujah. Give me Genesis 20. We shall read Genesis chapter 20, verse 1 until 7. The Bible says, and Abraham, and I'd request, please, give me New King James. Just give me New King James. Amen. It will, it will help us a lot from the thou, thou, this, this. Amen. God is good. You let us follow translator or translator. You have it? Good. And Abraham journeyed from there to the south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and stayed in Gerar. We've read this before, but we'll read again. Verse 2. Now Abraham said unto Sarah his wife, She is, said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. Hallelujah. Those days, coffee. Java Hakuna. You see? Hallelujah. Ponyoka na milioni. God is good. <laughs> uh -huh. The next verse. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a, good, you are a dead man. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord appears in Abimelech, You are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Hallelujah. I can preach a whole sermon on this. I preached this once during a couple seminar. God is good. Hallelujah. To look on a very long ministry. God is good. The ministry Lienda Sana. God is good. Malta calls it Mingi. Indeed, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. I'm looking at the Lord's intervention of this and how the Lord views these things. Amen. It is the Lord's relationship with Abraham. It is not Sarah that is the problem. It is not the woman he has taken. The problem is who the woman is to the Lord. Am I making sense? It is not the woman he had taken. It is because I don't think it was the first time Abimelech had done that. 
I think Abraham going to Gera, Abraham knew that Abimelech's nature is. He sees, he likes, he takes. So he went aware. And so it is not Sarah that was the problem. The problem was who Sarah meant to the Lord. The value of Sarah unto the Lord. That was the issue. Number two, the value of Abraham unto the Lord. This is what forces the Lord's hand. In the new covenant, can I tell you something? We are of higher value than Abraham. In the new covenant, you are of higher value. God is good. Verse 4. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? This means that Abimelech had brought her. But Abimelech had not. Verse 5. God is good. <laughs> Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And, she, and even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart, please underline that, in the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, I have done this. Please underline that. If you want to understand, the Lord looks at the heart. That is why we say that truth in its own right defends itself. I always say it's truth self-sanctifies. You don't have to fight for truth. Truth always self-sanctifies. God is good. I've been in ministry for a while. People have said many things about me. Amen. And I am sure they'll say, Amen. God is good. They will say many things. But you don't defend those things. Where you have truth, truth always self-sanctifies. Lies is what you defend. And this man is telling God, listen, in the integrity of my heart, God, you know my intention. My intention was not to do this. Lord, you know my intention was never this. The Lord looks at the integrity of the heart. Next verse. And God said to him in a dream, yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. Hallelujah. So you ask yourself, why did God say he's a dead man? Amen. It was God showing his power. Amen. God showing him his power. God bringing him to, 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 to submission. For I also withheld you from sinning against me. Now here we get the understanding. Um, I'm sinning against me. Therefore I did not let you touch her. Meaning when, 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 when he had taken Sarah, it was God who put in his heart that Sarah alale alafu kesho menilewa. God is good. So Abimelech thinks that it is him, but it is God who has stopped him. It is God who has covered him because God is a God of justice. Hallelujah. Next verse. I can teach a whole day on this. Now therefore restore the man's wife for he is a prophet. And he will this the first time, by the way, the first time this is being mentioned in the Bible. The word prophet, the first time. Note that down. Eh? Principle of first mention. This man, for he is a prophet and he will pray for you and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you will surely die, you and all who are yours. Abimelech means, remember I told you, it's not a name, it's a title. Abimelech is not a name, it's a, it's a king. Amen. Melech in Hebrew is king. Can we pray? This is God's word for me. It is alive and true and sharper than any two-edged sword. I believe this word is changing my life today. Holy Spirit, give me the ability to receive my Rema word today and the alertness to perceive the revelation in your word for me and the strength to be a doer of the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll go back very quickly. The principle of first mention, number one, is of course we hear the Lord mentioning a prophet for the first time. God is good. But also the second thing we have to note is that it's also an interesting thing because when Abraham sleeps in Genesis chapter 15, he goes into a deep sleep and the Lord appears to him. The Bible doesn't say it is a dream. It means Abraham is between two states. Amen. This is the first time you're hearing that God is coming to a man in a dream and a hidden for that matter. Hallelujah. The Lord's concern for Abraham is shown here. The relationship of God with his children is shown here. That God will go out of his way to protect what concerns you. Amen. God will go out of his way to protect what concerns you. And the Lord in his wisdom finds a way to protect Ab Abimelech. Secondly, Abraham himself 
did not know that God sees him as a prophet. It is God who is saying the man is a prophet. Abraham is not seeing the prophetic gift in his life. And God is saying, take back the wife to this man. And this man has the anointing given by me to pray over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to look at this. That in this story of Genesis chapter 20 is where we find everything and anything about dreams. Everything about dreams is found in chapter 20 verse 1 to 7. All that which we'll start today is covered here. Because in the principle of first mention, we understand that when God mentions something in Genesis, it is mentioned throughout scripture. So how does Abimelech know in the dream that this is the God of Abraham? How does Abimelech know the source of this dream? How does Abimelech believe the dream when he wakes up and thinks, hey, take back your wife. Sengesema, you're a nightmare. Shindwe. What happens in that dream moment that when he wakes up, he tells Abraham, you deceived me. You want me to die. What is the nature of that dream that empowers his spirit when he comes out? He is sure of the action to take. Hallelujah. Because we're not here, first of all, I, I, I mean, I, I, whenever I read this text, I always lean towards a God who cares for his own. I always lean towards a God who protects his own. I always lean towards a God who is always perfecting that which concerns us. But tonight, we are looking at a God who will always find a way. Because God will communicate with you at your level. Please note that down. God will always communicate to you at your level. God knew if I appear in a cloud, if I appear in fire, there is no way Abimelech will understand. When God wants to talk to Olive, he will find a way to talk to you in your level. So to Scorpio and Haraka, don't be in a hurry to sit and stress yourself for seven hours. Trying to hear. Relax. Amen. God is good. Have you ever seen people forcing God to speak? Mm. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. He talks to you based on where you are. I've said there is a level in your faith where you finish praying, you take your Bible, you do this. The proud have me greatly in derision. I see you. Thou art good and doest good things. There is that level. Hallelujah. And funny enough, it works. When you are there, it works. Then the Lord moves. When you pray, you grow. The Lord moves another way of talking to you. He always moves. But God will always find a way. Even in matters you don't understand. I have times, yes, I thank God for this grace. I thank God for the grace. That I know how to hear the voice of God clearly. I know to hear what God is saying clearly. But there are times when I'm so clouded, I can't hear. Amen. And I turn on maybe watch a sermon. And the first two lines of the sermon, I know this is God talking to me. I've had times when my daughter comes and says something. She walks in one day and I was struggling with her, I was struggling with her to, to, to try to understand something. And I'm asking God, what do I do? What do I do? And my daughter came and sat in the room with me and told me, Daddy, can we meditate together for 15 minutes? I told her, 15 minutes, meditate. You know what meditate is? She said, yes. I told her, okay, let's meditate. Do I put a watch? She said, you will know in 15 minutes it's finished. She sat on the bed. And I looked at her like she's crazy. Then it hit me. That's what God wants me to do. And I went into silence. Then the Lord spoke in silence. And gave me instruction. After the three minutes were over, she went. I called her another daughter, let's meditate. She told me that it's boring. <laughs> she went. That was just a moment. Hallelujah. He too. <laughs> Amen. There are times when you first find that someone random will talk to you. There are times you can't hear, but God will find a way to talk to you. So note that God will always find a way to speak to you at your level. Always. But, underline the word but, everyone, everyone should have the capability and the capacity to receive a dream from God. It is the fastest, easiest way for God to communicate to anyone. Do you know why dreams are the fastest, easiest ways to communicate? Because you are asleep. You won't fight back. Do you know that 
drunkards are never terrorized by demons. Sisemi kama unapigwa na mapepo usiku ukunywe pombe. Just say, drunkards don't. A drunkard can sleep on top of a grave at Langata Cemetery and wake up in the morning and go, where jaribu? And it's because the spirit of alcoholism not drunkard is a stubborn spirit. The enemy finds that person too stubborn. And I'm watching. So when you sleep, it's the time you fight with God the least. Because it takes a lot. I've always said this, and this is what people always seem to miss whenever they're learning how to hear the voice of God. I'll teach about this maybe in, in September. When you learn to hear the voice of God, it is very easy to hear God on things you want to hear him. It's very easy to hear your own voice. Nikuja tena. Ni raisi sana you convince yourself by the way God told me that I should go buy a car. Ni raisi ujiambie because you want a car. In fact, it's blue in color. Hallelujah. I remember the first time I dared to think I was hearing God. I was preaching somewhere and I stood and I knew God had spoken and I said there is a lady here she's called Mary and God is touching you right now. Mary put up your hand. Haki there was no Mary. There was no Mary. And I had to go back and sit and I said okay Mary, Mary Mary Ukuji, Mary Mary Mary. Okay. Uh, who knows anyone called Mary? That's what I put there. I went back, sat, asked the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost told me, you didn't listen to my voice. You listened to your voice. It is easy to hear God, and this is why it's also dangerous. It's easy to hear God on other people's lives. You start to know you hear God when God can talk to you about difficult things in your life. What are difficult things in your life? When God begins to tell Mike, watch a mood. When God begins to tell someone, Hasira achana nayo. Me, I don't believe. You telling me, oh, God spoke to me. God told me. We have to go back to basics. What has he told you about your character first? What has he told you personally that you need to change? God not be concerned telling you, but you have to come back. And the more you grow in hearing God and how God can trust you with his voice more is your ability to hear tough things about you. When God tells you you are too proud, I can't lift you now. I can't give you a job right now. You are too arrogant. Lord, I'm the most humble in my family. It's because you have no job. Hallelujah. When the Lord begins to tell you difficult things, when the one time when, and I'm telling you because there's something I was praying for, asking God, asking God, and the Lord told me, are you ready? I told him, yes. And the Lord began to point me on other things about my life. Then one day when I was praying, I told you this before, before him and asking him, what should I do? The Lord said, this answer I'll give you in 10 years. In 10 years, you will see this answer. I never told anyone sat down, wrote under my book 10 years from the date. Then I began to walk with God counting the 10 years. Then in between he gave me another teaching I taught here once before about how God looks at time. And the Lord showed me in between I had lost two years. Tough conversation. So the thing came after 10 years, God years. In my years there were 12. So when the Lord begins to speak, I'm saying, dreams, anyone and everyone should be able to hear a dream and have a dream from God. Everyone should be able to dream. Can we agree? Everyone should be able to dream. But when God begins to tell you about tough things about your life, is when now the Lord is lifting you into realms where he can trust you with his word. If God can tell you tough things about you, then the Lord cannot trust you with the word for nations. Am I making sense? So when you're asking God, talk to me. Understand, you may be asking God for a car, but be willing for God to tell you, you are too angry to drive. Watch a mafuriko. Mafuriko ni nini? Yeah. 
Joel 228. <laughs> I always get that one wrong. Eh? In my mind, I think they may pata. Then I say, Amen. I'm not saying this, understand my statement. I'm not saying this that God is punishing anyone. I'm just saying that because he's a good father, God will teach you. Because God loves us so much that God will not expose us to embarrassment. Not that. God loves you too much not to embarrass you. And so the father will always take time. And so whenever you begin to hear from God and God is giving you dreams and everything, for God to begin to tell you secrets through dreams about your family, your bloodline, your mother, your grandmother, all those things, God must be convicted that you are at a place of spiritual maturity where you can handle the truth of what is hidden. Am I making sense? That you can handle the truth of what is hidden. Because I've done ministry where you're praying for people and you realize during prayer, and it comes out through revelation of the, of, the, of, the, of the spirit, that there is a child, and there is a mother, and there is a mother who sacrificed a child. And that revelation comes out, and you can't even hide it. It came out in a very bad way. And for the Lord to release that information, the people being told must be mature enough. There are secrets about our lives that God cannot tell us until he is sure that we have the maturity to take the heaviness of what God wants to say. Am I making sense? So at times, God, should I invest or not? Before you are able to hear yes or no, God must also be willing to know that he can tell you deep things about you. He can tell you the delay in your life is because you are lazy. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. I began saying that discernment and practicing of discernment comes from what? Eating of meat. And eating meat is when the father can put you on an altar and tell you, by the way, deal with this issue. Hallelujah. Joel 2.28. It says, it shall come to pass afterwards afterwards, after a period of time, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see what? Visions. Give me Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in that last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall see dreams. Afterward, Acts chapter 2 is the afterward. Because Pentecost has taken place. The Lord has poured his spirit upon all flesh. Are we talking? Are you understanding? So Joel is saying there is a day when God will pour his spirit and you will dream dreams. Then Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost has been poured and now people need to dream dreams and see visions. So if you have the Holy Spirit in you, then you should be able to have dreams. I said last night during inter intercessory prayers, there are people the Lord is restoring to you the ability to dream. Hallelujah. God is good. Write this down. Dreams are a dimension of communication. Dreams are a dimension of communication. They are not a method. They are a dimension of communication. God willing on Sunday I'll preach on this. But dreams are a dimension of communication. Not a means there's a difference. Hallelujah. Because dreams move in various dimensions of the spirit. Numbers 12, 12 verse 6. It says, he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. I make myself known to him in a vision and I speak to him in a dream. It is a dimension of communication. It is that you are asleep, yes, but the Lord takes you into a dimension where you can interact with the Lord. That is why when you find in dreams, I asked someone once, those who wear glasses, do you wear glasses in your dreams? 38 marks. God is good. <laughs> Amen. Because what happens in dreams is a different dimension altogether. It is not a means of communication. A means of communication respects the laws of communication. A dimension of communication respects the laws of that dimension. 
That is why in a dream you'll say, suddenly I was sitting in, in, um, I was in Nairobi, then I was walking on foot, then I was in Johannesburg. Will you see a man, please? please. <laughs> That's a dimension. It means that there are things that operate in that realm that are different. Are we communicating now? So it is a dimension of communication. Now, dreams and visions are different. And they're extremely different. I said this before. Anything you see in the spirit while you are conscious is a vision. Anything you see in the spirit realm while you are conscious is a vision. If you are praying and you see angels in the sanctuary, that is a vision. That is why the burning bush that Moses sees, theologians classify the burning bush as a vision. Why? Seven marks. Why? Uh huh. That's the first thing. Second thing. No one else was able to see it. Only Moses could see the bush. No one else could see. So when Joshua is walking with a sword and walks and finds an angel standing with a sword and Joshua draws his sword, only Joshua can see the sword. Where they can see that angel. That's a vision. When Elijah tells the young man, I wish God would open your eyes that you may see that those that are with us are more than those that are with them. That is a vision. Anything you see in the spirit and you are conscious is a vision. If you are praying here and you see gold all over here, it is a vision. Amen. So at times even when I'm laying hands, what I work with is the vision that I see. Am I making sense? So when I'm standing here and I go and I want to lay hands on Monica, it's not because I sat here and I thought, hey, Monica, Nakani Kama, she needs a laying of hands. No. It's because when I was here, I saw the Lord laying hands and the Lord tells me, go and confirm. Amen. I am touching him and go and confirm. And there are times I'm standing here and he tells me I'm touching so and so. I'm healing so and so. And I see the Lord maybe taking something out of Gideon. I see God doing something over Jackie. I see God doing something. But there's nothing. I am just seeing him. Am I making sense? The same way if you have the gift of healing and deliverance, you'll also see. Good morning. Because you have the gift of deliverance, the courage car of healing and deliverance, you will discern an evil spirit. And there are moments you see them. Can I get an amen? Amen. Those days used to do deliverance on um, the last Saturday of the month. God is good. We didn't stop. The Lord just called me to do, to, re, to, re, to, re, to replant it. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. They did not stop. Amen. Yes, we just had a different conversation with God and God wanted to be done in a, in a different way. That was good for last year. For this year, we shall resume, I'm sure, very soon. I'm waiting for the green light from, from the Lord on how and the method it shall go. God is good. Because the truth is that um, we were here from morning until midnight, more often than not, still at a service on Sunday. So it was good to start up and the people who the Lord wanted to set free in that season and they were set free and miracles took place. Amen. But we're in a different season now where We'll still have the healing and deliverance services, but they'll be done in a different way. God is good. That is why also we have to get more reinforcement. I had to, other people have to be called into the ministry um, who will be able to help. Amen. That's why other callings were released. Those of you who are here used to see when I'd be here. There are people who would enter. Amen. And immediately they enter. Okay, Alex and Mike will testify. The moment they enter like this, they'd see my body language would change. My tone would change. My everything would change. Why? It's the spirit that I'm seeing. Are we together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The time someone walked in here once to pray, and I, this person stood here. The moment I saw them like this, and I began praying, then I stopped, and I could see monitoring spirits were surrounding this person. Thirteen of them, they had come. And a lot of them, these spirits have come. They want to invade this sanctuary. And like a Haman will bear witness, immediately I changed. The, everything in the prayer changed. It became a different war. 
Hallelujah. Are we communicating? At times you can be praying for someone you're praying, and you see something. At the time I was praying for my son Israel. I was laying hands on him and he was praying. I was praying for him and something was attacking him and I was praying. And at the moment when I finished the first layer, the second layer, when I saw the spirit that was standing trying to take his life. Amen. My wife will just tell you, the way I held him, she knew. She just got up and told her, she knew. He's young He's young but at that time, the, the, because there is a frequency in the spirit, there's a frequency you get into, there's a tone you get into that you'll tie or connect with the anointing that is flowing. Amen. Tuesday, I talk about the sound. The Holy Ghost moves in the dimension of sound. You remember? Those who watch the school of intercession. I said he moves in the dimension of sound. So there's, there are times in warfare when the frequency of the Holy Ghost is different and you need to adjust your frequency to that frequency. That is why there are times that the level of warfare you are fighting and the frequency you are using, the anointing cannot come together. You will labor more. There are 14 different dreams in the Bible. Back to the topic. 14 significant dreams in the Bible. Let me underline that. There are 14 significant dreams in the Bible. Significant. There are a bit more. There are about 5-6 more. But significant are 14. Hallelujah. And there are over 20 visions. Some significant, some insignificant. So when the Lord is speaking to us through dreams, and the Lord is communicating to us through dreams, we must learn that, that through the story of Abimelech, we learn something. That there are different reasons why the Lord releases dreams. In the dimension of dreams, there are different reasons why the Lord releases dreams. Number one thing we learn is this, that there are dreams used for intervention. Genesis 31, 24. There are dreams used for intervention. Laban was planning to harm Jacob. And the Lord appears in a dream and said, be careful that you speak to, that you speak to Jacob neither good nor bad. The Lord intervenes in the life of Jacob through a dream. When you talk about the dimension of dreams, what I mean is this, is that there is a possibility, on a different day I'll teach this, in school of intercession, there is a possibility, but when you are praying here, you can be praying and telling God, there is a matter of mine in a particular area, it is in the high court, I have a matter that is stuck at the HR's office, I have a matter stuck in, in, in uh, South Africa, Lord, I want you to intervene, and the Lord sends a dream to that person in that office, when they sleep tonight, they have a dream about you, and they wake up to Tomorrow and they execute. It is in the Bible. At times when we are praying, we forget how much power we have. But you can send out a prayer and tell God, talk to that person in their sleep while they sleep because dreams the Lord used them to intervene. Jacob was in trouble and the Lord intervened to Laban. Jacob, in fact, did not even know God was intervening. In the new covenant, you can know God is intervening. Tell God, go tonight. When this person is sleeping, Akilala Usiku, out, out. Hallelujah. This is only for those who are praying for other things. If you are praying for marriage, not the right prayer. Hallelujah. Usiombe mtu ende kukuota usiku. Nusikia Lucy? No. Yosi maombi tunaomba. Hallelujah. What I'm saying, you want to push your agenda, you have a stark contract. That is why I always tell people, give me the name of the person. Send me the name. We did that person in the spirit by force. Hallelujah. When they sleep, the Lord intervenes. The Lord uses dreams to intervene. Number two, the Lord uses dreams to give direction. Matthew 2.12. The Lord uses dreams to give, inter um, 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 to give direction. Joseph. The Lord tells Joseph, take the boy. Hallelujah. God is good. So this is the one for the Magi. He tells the Magi, be warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They depart for their own country another way. In the next verse, it's when the angel appears to Joseph and tells Joseph, take Jesus, go to Egypt. The time the Lord, you're asking God, what do I do? Should I stay? Should I go? Should I run? Should I fight? Should I invest? Should I pray? Should I fast? And the Lord answers you. 
in a dream. At times, God gives direction in dreams. Hallelujah. Number three, the Lord uses dreams for revelation. Give me Genesis 28. He gives dreams for revelation. When Jacob is running away from his father, from his brother Esau, and Jacob is running and is going towards um, where Laban is, when he gets to Beersheba, listen to the word of the name, he was coming out of, from Beersheba, went toward Haran. Again, if you've done your Bible study, you know where Haran is. Amen. And when he's there, this vision, God appears to him in a dream, and Jacob sees a ladder. Sees the Lord, the angels going up and coming down. And the Lord says, this land I have given unto you, and I shall bring you back to this place. And Jacob sets that place, pours oil on that altar, and calls the place what? Aya. Jesus is Lord. Jesus Lord. He calls the place Bethel. Oh, yes. Yes. That place, he calls it Bethel. Why? It is, the Lord gives him revelation that you are running away from your brother, but the revelation of your journey is you're going to come back here. The reason for your going, hallelujah, is that don't think you're going there to stay. You will come back. The Lord gives him revelation about the season of the life where he is in that moment. The Lord will use dreams to give you revelation about your season. Hallelujah. Number four, the Lord uses dreams for prophecy. We won't read this, the long chapters. Daniel chapter two and Daniel chapter four. They are what we call prophetic dreams. Prophetic dreams. Hallelujah. There are prophecies that the Lord releases through dreams. Someone told me once that I saw you, Victor, in a dream. You are prophesying over me. I asked, what was I prophesying? Even in confirming the flesh, God is good. Did you come and meet me? God is good. You're going to be the prophecies that could you say, but this not me. Amen. But some dreams come with prophecy in them. Some dreams, this is important, come for instruction. Give me Matthew 2.13. Again, when Jacob Joseph is being told by God, run, arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy. Very remarkable. The angel does not say, take Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The angel does not say Jesus. Not that in your Bible. It's something to preach another day. As they say, Jesus, to take the young child. At times, the, angel, the Lord will appear to you in a dream to give you instruction. Amen. Amen. At times, you'll be asleep. You'll be asleep. And the Lord will be waking you up to go close the door. You see in the dream, you are closing the door. If you see in a dream, you're waking up to close your sitting room door in your house. And you wake up. Please just go check the door. Please. God is good. Hallelujah. There is a day I had a dream that I left my keys in the car and the lights were on. I woke up, went back to sleep. In the morning, the keys were in the car and the lights were on. The battery was dead. God is good. <laughs> I did it for instruction. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are we talking? Yes. Because God will give dreams about many things. A lot of things. I want to give an example of, I mean, I know more of you have stories about dreams, but I'm just going to give a few examples. A time I had a dream three times. I always say if you have a dream more than once in the same night, there's a 99% chance that dream is urgent and immediate. If you dream the same thing, sleep, wake up, same thing, sleep, wake up, the same thing, it doesn't break. There's something God is getting your attention to. You need to get up and deal with it. One time I was dreaming and I dreamed that thieves entered our house and they stole but they couldn't enter the bedroom. I fought them in the sitting room and they, and they went. Dreamt the second time. I locked the door, the seal entered through the window. Came, but they didn't enter the bedroom. Third time, same dream. Woke up. Can I tell you the truth? We were robbed. Amen. We were robbed. When you had locked the door, but they found a way to enter. We were robbed. But I understood why they didn't enter the, the master bedroom. Because my wife was supposed to be in the house and she wasn't. 
She was pregnant with, uh, with, with Joshua. She wasn't in the house. So they would have found her in the house. So I understood why the dream showed that they didn't enter the master bedroom. Am I making sense? Yes. Next one. The Lord will use dreams for inspiration. The Lord will give dreams for inspire. Genesis 31. Those of you who are praying for business ideas. The Lord can give you a business idea while you sleep. Jacob was told how to increase his flock while he slept. God is good. Many years ago, we were doing a competition, a drama comp um, competition. I was not born again. And I was supposed to come up with a play. I slept. I had a dream about the play. Woke up. Wrote the play. Went with it. And we won. Next year it didn't work. God is good. I'm just saying that at times you're asking God, give me inspiration. I need to write a book. I need to do something. Sometimes business ideas come through your dreams. Nandokomana, if you are serious with your work with God, you must have a book near you when you sleep. Nirudie, you must have a book near you when you sleep. See Bible too. In a kitabu, you'll just wake up and write. You know the danger of waking up and going to your phone? Is you might wake up, go to your phone to put the message of the dream. Then you see a WhatsApp message. Naikutoi maisabu. Wanto kuchibu your WhatsApp. Before you fight with your in-laws until morning, you've forgotten the dream. It's good when you just have a book near you where you get up and write your, write your dream immediately. Write your dream immediately. Always have it. Inspiration can come when you sleep. You're asking God at night. Let me tell you, there are times you pray. Go to bed and go tonight. Give me an answer. Have your book ready. Tell God my book is ready. Give me a dream. Lord, my mind is busy. Give me a dream. Jacob was told how to multiply his wealth in his sleep. The vision or the dream of his business strategy came while he slept. God, what do I do with my business? Lala eka kitabu karibu. A dream can be used by God for confirmation. Judges 7. Confirmation. A Midianite had a dream and came and told Gideon about the dream. Told Gideon, I saw this uh, loaf of bread rolling down a hill. Gideon said, this is proof but we have won the battle. There are times through a dream the Lord confirms a journey. There are times the Lord confirms that wedding. There are times the Lord confirms that prophecy. The Lord will use a dream to confirm something he said. God is good. God is good. And my two favorites, these ones are the ones we'll pray for tonight. The Lord uses dreams for positioning. Dreams for positioning. Judges 7. Read the chapter. The Lord uses dreams for positioning. Genesis 41. I'll ask you a question. The dreams of Pharaoh were about who? Hallelujah. Genesis 41. The dreams of Pharaoh were about who? Take time before you answer. Don't jump in. Mark time at the door. The dreams of Pharaoh had nothing to do with Egypt. They had everything to do with the destiny of Joseph. There are dreams the Lord releases to position you. This has happened in the Bible twice to prove that it's true. Because Daniel also, the king has a dream and cannot sleep, cannot interpret, calls all the wise men and they fail. Who is called? Daniel. The Lord gave the king a dream beyond him. The dream was not for anything else. The dream was the Lord to expose the wisdom in Daniel. The key was for the Lord to expose the wisdom in Joseph. There are dreams the Lord releases to supernaturally position you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And lastly, dreams are used for impartation impartation. The Lord can actually bless you. Can actually give you something in a dream. 
When you pray, you have a lot of money. And you stuke wa muke. Upate yo pesa haiko. We say, ah, it was just a dream. Hallelujah. Hans, I receive this wealth. I receive this wealth in the name of Jesus. It must manifest. Amen. Kuna siku niliota ni melala tu. Ni melalia dollars. Ni melalia dollars. Ni kamuka. Hey. 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 You know the first thing you feel is a sunken feeling. Because in the dream you had broken poverty. In the dream I was thinking I'm waiting for my wife to come and tell her we have, we have a bed made out of dollars. Then I woke up. There is biblical proof the Lord imparts in dreams and I began to claim. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something powerful? Don't tell anyone but you're my friends. The anointing over my life, I got it in a dream. Hallelujah. The anointing in my life, I got in a dream. Live the first time I told you I was lying down. And the Holy Ghost came and lifted me. That was my encounter with the Holy Spirit. I stayed in that state for a while. Prayed, 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 prayed. Then one night I was asleep. I remember I was praying. I was telling, telling uh, that I was staying. I think I was in my mother's house then. I prayed at night. And told God my prayer for ministry. I told God three things in ministry that I wanted. I won't tell you all of them. Amen. I'll tell you two. The first thing I told God is, bless me. Anoint me with the word. Open the scriptures for me. Let the Bible come alive in my hands. Amen. Hallelujah. I told him I want to know you in ways that, I, that I've never known you. And I want to tell people about this God. Open the Bible to me. Amen. Prayer number one. Prayer number two. I told God, I pray that I may not just preach the word, but I may do the word. Give me the anointing to be able to speak, to preach, to lay hands and things happen. For the glory of your name. Hallelujah. Third prayer, Stawambia. God is good. And that night when I slept, I remember the dream very well. I was standing in the middle of the city, Nairobi. I was standing. And I was standing and I was looking at the city like this, looking at this like this. Then there was, from heaven, this cloud came. A white cloud came. And it came, and I knew the dream is the glory of God. And it came where I was. Surrounded me. I got sucked in that cloud. Then the cloud merged became one with me. And I had a burning feeling and I began praying in, in the bed. I began praying in the bed. I began praying in the bed. And I was feeling a burning thing like something literally had taken over my spirit. Something, I don't know. I got up and I began to pray. I was not praying in tongues yet. So I began to pray understanding. I tell God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Then I went to sleep. After the next two, three days is when we go to do ministry in Meru. Surely I can olive. God is good. Oliver look out for one. Hallelujah. Siku muona. Yes. Will disappear. Did not see her. She told me she had a basin that was bigger than her. That was her story. Not my story. You know what I'm Me, I'm just saying. That is when I went to pray. And I had never prayed for anyone. Never laid hands on anyone. I was okay where I was. Is when one of the guys told me, go lay hands. I told him I don't know how to lay hands. He said, go lay hands. It was very harsh. Tell him, I don't want to pray. Just call the Holy Ghost. Then I went, laid hands on the first person and the power of God hit them. Second person, the power of God hit them. Third person, power of God hit them. I ran away. I went to the city, the forest there somewhere. And I cried, telling God, how can you use a sinner like me? God is good. The impartation on my life came when I was asleep. First Kings chapter 4. Read chapter 4. First Kings 3, 5. It says this. And in Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said to Solomon what? What shall I give you? 
Solomon's receiving of wisdom and wealth is in a dream. The wisest man on earth received wisdom in his dream. Imagine with Lala, ukamka asubuhi unaongea vitu vingine za Aristotle. God is good. Suddenly the next morning Mike unaamka you are telling Gabby things. Kama wewe zinakujua wewe. Hizi vitu tulitoa hapo usiku. Where did you get these things? Suddenly where did all these things come from? He slept and impartation. So at times in your dream that's why it's good to know the word. But it's why it's good to pray. I have a friend of mine who told me that she was sleeping and the Holy Ghost touched her tongue while she was asleep and she began praying in tongues in her dream. Woke up praying in tongues and the gift of tongues remained. Impartation can take place in your dream. That is why it's good to know the Bible. It's good to pray. It's good to fellowship. Why? When the Lord encounters you in a dream and God asks you, what can I do for you? If your network when you are awake is godly, you will give a godly answer. Hallelujah. And that is when you will know. I'll give you another uh, funny story. This is a bad one. I was asleep. And when I was sleeping, this power entered the room and it was like a light entered into, 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 into the room in my dream. And it lifted me, put me on the wall. Can't forget. And said, I want to give you power. And I thought, okay, this is good. Another level. Then I stopped. I said, why can't you bless me first? I said, I need love. I feel I want to be loved. And the more I said that, that thing turned dark and dark and dark and dark. It was the devil coming to manipulate the giftings in my life. So when you know the word, you will know a demonic impartation in your dreams. You will know whatever you have been given in a dream is bad. Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. God is good. Because I said number one, what number one was? What dreams are used for, right? Yes. Number two is dreams have a source. Dreams have a source. So, for that impartation to take place in your, in your dreams, dreams have a source. Give me Ecclesiastes 5.3. Hallelujah. Number four, not all dreams are true. Jeremiah 23. Not all dreams are true. He says, I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Next verse. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. God is saying that it is possible. Someone can say, I dreamt. But Ali Amen. Let me tell you. If you dream about something at 2 in the morning and you dream that I am being chased by gorillas in the Congo. God is good. I'm in Rwanda. Is it Rwanda? Rwanda, sana sana, yes. If you dream that at 2 o'clock, why is God telling you and not telling me? So that you can pray. Not so that you text me and tell me you saw me being chased by gorillas. To what end? If God wanted to tell me in a dream, see, Angeniambia, he told you because you can pray about it. Now, when I finish to pray about it, there is a chance the Lord can give me a scripture of hope. The scripture of hope is what I can share with you at five in the morning and share with you a scripture. Your enemies shall fall both sides. Nime Maliza. Nime Mali? Nime Maliza. Oh, praise God, I saw your, I saw your message early in the, in, the, in, the, in the morning. Yes, 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 yes. I was just praying. I thought of you. I thought I shared that scripture. What you have? No, no, I was praying. Then I saw gorillas running after you in the night. Where will you leave the house? Am I making sense? Because if you don't measure the dream in prayer, you might be dreaming a dream that is not right. You might be dreaming a dream. Remember, there are three, there are three levels of dreams. There are spiritual dreams, there are soulish dreams, and there are fleshly dreams. 
Future dreams are of the Holy Ghost. Soulish dreams come from your own thoughts. Fleshly dreams come from your own lust. Am I making sense? So you might have a soulish dream. I might actually, from the depths of my heart, I might be looking at Miriam and I think, I, oh, Miriam, it's time for Miriam to get married. It is time for her to have a car. Because of the goodness of my heart. And I talk to Miriam until midnight. I mean, Miriam, I, me, I believe it is your time. I'm pos a possibility and sleep and see Miriam sweating in my dream. It doesn't mean it's a spiritual dream. It's a soulish dream. Am I making sense? A soulish dream is born from interaction. So what do I do? I saw the dream. I must put it before the Lord in prayer and tell the Holy Spirit, I'm praying. You showed me Miriam. You showed me Miriam that driving a car. Lord, is it true? Is it true? Verify with scripture. Verify with scripture. Give me something to verify that this dream is from you. You are testing the dream. Am I talking to somebody? Tell me you're learning, please. Are you learning something? Yes. This will protect you from panicking and worrying. There's a day you'll pray at night and see a road accident and you don't have to panic because the source of the dream is a fleshly dream. Am I making sense? Yes. So it is good to always discern. Not all dreams are true. And at times people have come to me telling me, interpret for me this dream. You tell someone this dream is not true. Anakasirika. I've heard people saying that I'm jealous of their dreams. But they're your dreams. Wow. God is good. There are dreams, you must be aware that there are things you will dream about just because. If today I dream that, for example, Manchester United has won the league, that is not a dream, that's a nightmare. It can't be from God. It can't be from God. Send your mic. It can't be the Lord. And I know by discernment, you see, Mungu, God is good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I'm just saying that, 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 that it's good to understand that not every dream you have is true. But it's why there are people who rely, I'm going off course, but please bear with me. There are people who rely 100% on their dream life. You cannot rely your spirituality absolutely on dream life. There has to be the logos. The foundation of your dream life must be based on the word of God, your fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Those are the foundations of your dream life. There are people who don't read the Bible, they don't worship, they don't fast, they don't pray, but they dream. What is the source? What is the source? Am I making sense? No woman TikTok to a prophecy, prophet Wengi. Wengi. Hey, hey. I have never thought that these many prophets. When you know a prophet like Kobafu, Kobarabara, Java, Stuwapi, people everywhere. Any any to God is that random. Munga munga random. I'm in the kitchen cooking beans. I have a prophecy for Kenya. You are cooking beans in the kitchen. Isn't there a protocol for national prophecies? Hallelujah. I'm asking for a friend. Yani munga munga random. And people are just that way. No, no, no. You sit. At times, you sit on a dream for four or five days asking God questions before you speak. I've had, in fact, I've had dreams when I've dreamt about something, even about my family. And I take four or five days. I don't speak about it. I spend time. Then I come and tell my wife, this is what I saw in a dream. There are times I even ask a question. I can see in a dream something about even my wife. And I ask her a, 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 a question. I ask her, have you ever had a blue earring? Then I stop. And I be, ah, never, never, never. Ah, okay. Why are you asking? No, no, no. I just thought about a blue earring. I thought about a blue earring. I know you have a blue earring. When you have a blue earring. Kumuka, remember. Remember, God is saying, hey, hey. Namuacha. After a week or two weeks, she'll come and say, I had blue earrings when I was 13. I forgot them at a hotel somewhere. I'm like, okay. God is saying that we separate. I already prayed. Am I making sense? There is a level of wisdom that comes with dreams. Because the moment you become proud in your dreams, it is easy for the Lord to seize. Because dreams need to point to God, not to point to you. Am I making sense? Dreams, number five, dreams have layers and levels of interpretation based 
on the use of the dream. I shall repeat. Dreams have layers and levels of interpretation based on the use of the dream. Third time I'll say, dreams have layers and levels of interpretation based on the use of the dream. The use of the dream to meongea. For example, a dream for direction does not require interpretation. Joseph, take the child to Egypt. Kuna interpretation. Hakuna, what does Egypt mean in this context? Egypt is Egypt, isn't it? Then you look, but if it's a prophetic dream, then you go deeper. Proverbs 25 2. Give me Proverbs 25 2. It says, It's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out the matter. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. So when God releases a dream, there is a chance some things are concealed. Now, King small K, you are one. What is your work? To search out the matter. Father, what does this mean? Some dreams have layers. There's a dream based on where you are. I'll give an example. Uh, biblical examples are good. Joseph, when he sees the dream, that guy has, there are three sticks, you remember? The baker, there are three sticks, right? What does Joseph say? The three sticks represent three days. Three days. That is a level and a layer of interpretation. On a different day, if I was to preach a sermon about that baker and how his dream is connected to the Passover lamb, Jesus, hallelujah, is still a layer of interpretation because everything in the Bible points to Christ. Am I making sense? So if I was to preach here that dream and connect it to you with the cross and the last supper, I can draw a straight line. Because it is a layer of interpretation. There are dreams you will find that on the first layer of interpretation, you are just drinking tea. The next layer you find, oh, but I never wore shoes. Now I'm understanding what the shoes meant. Every dream has layers. So based on the use, there are dreams that are direct. There are dreams you have to come back and ask God, what is this dream about? Now, I'll give you four things because I'm in a good mood. These four things are important for you to know. Number one, what is your role in the dream? If you are trying to search out a matter in a dream, you have to look, what is your role in the dream? Because not all dreams are about you. Most might be about you but not all. What is your role in the dream? Are you an active participant? Are you witnessing something? Hallelujah. Are you the one being prayed for or are you the one praying for someone? What is your role in that dream? Are you the one chasing or the one being chased? Are you witnessing someone's life? Are you dreaming you're in my kitchen and I can't see you? What is your role in the dream? Because not all dreams are about you. Your role will let you know if the dream is about you. Am I making sense? So if I have a dream tonight, and in the dream I'm seeing that I'm laying hands on Olive, or I'm praying and I'm seeing that Miriam is laying hands on Olive, and I'm standing, I realize what? I am a third party in this dream. Meaning the dream is not about me. First layer of interpretation is that Olive needs prayers. So from where I am, I begin to intercede. I don't pick up the phone and tell Miriam, intercede for Olive. If God wanted Miriam to intercede for Olive, he would have given Miriam the dream. Am I making sense? Hallelujah. Please. And I repeat, for the sake of your sanity and peace of mind, God is good. <laughs> Let me tell you now. Any dream, I'm not saying there's a monopoly, but it is good. If someone tells you a dream about you, please. If you have a dream about someone, please pass it by me. Just in case. I have a gentleman who married the wrong wife because of a dream. Dominic <laughs> Yes. He married the wrong wife because someone told him, I saw in a dream that so and so is your wife. 
Muko shua aki ni yeye. The guy proposed. I regret every day. Unagana jamaa anasema I think I was conned. Not by the Lord. By a fellow intercessor. Good morning. So please. Kama umeota na Mike. That is an inappropriate statement. Kama umeona Mike kwa ndoto. Kiswahili ni ngumu. God is good. If you have dreamt If you have seen Mike in a dream, that is the right one. Eh? If you have seen Mike in a dream, it is good two things. Depending on your relationship with Mike, you might be close enough to Mike to tell Mike, Mike, I see you in a dream one, two, three, four. But there has to be one of you who needs to bring that dream forward to verify and test its validity. Are we together? This will save you a lot of problems. Because at times when you share a dream with a person and you are sharing a dream with a with person and the dream may be, yes, it is of God. But the requirement of the dream is not within your reach. You stand in the gap on something that you are not capable of standing. Let me communicate in brief. Amen. Yes. Number two. What is the main action in the dream? What is the main action in the dream? What is the main action in the dream? Are you standing? Are you sitting? Are you moving backwards? Are you riding a bicycle? Are you climbing a ladder? Are you eating? Are you sleeping? What is the main action in the dream? Please, if you are trying to write your dreams down, always just put what I'm telling you. In your own notebook, just write there the role, the main action. It will help you in interpretation also if the Lord releases this gift to you. What is the main action in the, in the dream? Am I going up a lift? Am I coming down a lift? There is always the main action. Am I flying? Am I lying down? Am I being chased? Am I running? Am I trying to fight? I'm too slow. What is the main action in my dream? Number three, what are the symbols and objects in the dream? What are the symbols and objects in the dream? You have to ask, what am I seeing? Am I seeing a snake? Am I seeing a color? Am I seeing a number? What is the object am I seeing? Am I seeing a cup? Am I seeing a plate? What am I seeing? All these things in a dream can be relevant or can be irrelevant. Am I making sense? These objects, don't estimate them. Remember when David is, when Saul is being anointed king, they use anointing oil that Samuel has. But Samuel uses a vial to do what? To anoint Saul. And a vial in Revelation means what? Judgment. The object was different. When Samuel is ordaining David, he uses what? A horn. Hallelujah. And you know a horn is destiny. A horn is victory. Are we communicating? So you must look at what is the object in the dream. Am I seeing a cross? Am I seeing a Bible? Am I seeing a lion? Am I seeing a, a gazelle? What animal am I seeing? What are the symbols and objects? And colors? All those things. Number four, how do you relate with the setting? How do you relate with the setting? Is it a setting you relate to? You see, if Haman is dreaming that he is acting a James Bond movie, there is a chance. That dream is not from God. Hallelujah. God is good. Because James Bond is in England. Haman is here. God is good. The color to ratio does not add up. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't do that. my jokes with Haman. Yes. We check out jokes. The point is this. You have to look at, do I relate with the dream? Is it tying to where I am? Can I connect with this? What is the setting? How do I relate to the setting of the dream? Is it practical? I have never been a teacher in my life. Why am I seeing myself giving a lecture? I have never been a nurse in my life. Why am I at a hospital? God is good. Now, the Bible says this. That where there is no vision, people perish. And that is why the devil will always fight your dreams. The devil will ensure he steals your dreams. Because where there is no vision, people do what? People perish. Now, I don't intend to reach this topic for long. 
I want to give you very quickly, in five minutes, common symbols that are in dreams. Can I do that? Cindy? Common symbols in dreams. This will help you when you're praying. Number one symbol. A pregnancy, a baby, or giving birth in a dream. A pregnancy, a baby, or giving birth in a dream. This means more often than not that something new is being birthed in your life. So if you dream you have a baby and it is stolen, something, the devil wants to steal something new from you. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. So it means something new is being birthed in your life. Now, there are instances where a pregnancy can mean Hallelujah. A pregnancy can mean a weight, a burden on someone. There are times it might mean that. That is why you have to go back to the initial question which was, how do you relate to the setting? At times a pregnancy can mean a burden. Are we together? It can mean a burden. It's not often, but it depends on other contexts as well. As, 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 as well. Um, I'm summarizing. Number two, being chased. Number one, this means that there's an evil spirit at work to hinder your life and delay your progress. When you see you're being chased or someone is being chased, it is not a blessing. It's an evil spirit at work trying to hinder your life and to delay your progress. Don't even care who's chasing you. As long as you're being chased in a dream, kame umana. You are too jua, kame umana nini? Kame umana. Don't even discern. Wake up and bind. Number three, when you see cars or vehicles, again, I'll summarize. Different cars have different meanings. For example, if you're driving a, a, a sports car, a sports car, this could mean that the anointing God is listening in your life is an anointing for acceleration. Things are happening very fast. A car can mean your calling, can mean your ministry, can mean your career, can mean your job. A car can mean your calling, can mean your ministry, can mean your career, can mean your job. If I have time, I'll talk about flat tires and all those things. I don't have time for that. If you see a van or a big bus, again, it might mean two things. One, you are carrying unnecessary things. If you see a bus, you are carrying unnecessary things. Or also, it might mean you have the capacity to bless many. If you see a 4x4 car, it means you are in a situation that is rough and difficult. And the Lord is releasing the grace for you to make it. So, before you thank God for a good car and a big car, it just means that there's a terrain you need to here. Kuna melema na mabonde. Hallelujah. God is good. Kuna melema muka sabu yaka claim. Ni maona for by four. I receive. Be careful. God is good. It means you might be going through a difficult time. Amen. Huh? Yeah, four by four. Difficult time. I'm scared. Wale mbele thank God. Mwana watu wale thank God apoja four by four jana usiku. Number four, deceased relatives. When you see deceased relatives. I normally have a very bad... Whenever I see that people in a dream, I'm conscious not to accept it. But when you see a dead person in a dream, look at one thing. What did they mean to you? Question one. Then also separate issues. Are you still grieving? It's a good question to ask because it may be part of your grieving process. If you just lost a loved one, you're likely to see them in a dream for about a couple of months until you stop grieving. But what a dead person means is a generational issue that needs to be broken. When you see a dead person, it means there's a generational issue that needs to be broken or a generational blessing that needs to be picked. 
or a generational blessing that needs to be picked. Number five, dying. When you dream about death or someone dying, this is about a change in your life or something coming to end. Very few times is it death in a dream means death. I'll repeat. Death is often something about to change or something coming to end. Death does not often mean that someone is dying. So you might see a cousin of yours who is unwell and you see them dying. Dying might mean that the disease is ending. You might see your father dying or your spouse dying in a dream. It means that something in their life is coming to an end. A season is changing. Very few times will God tell you about death by showing you death in a dream. It's very rare. More often than not, when God is telling you about death, you are, you are, you are awake. Hallelujah. More often than not, you are awake. When God is telling you about death, you are awake. You're, you're, you're not asleep. Hallelujah. Or something like this as well. Something in your flesh needs to die. Something in your flesh needs to die. That's what death means. Number six, falling. Falling, kwanguka. This can be good or bad. It could mean God is instructing you to let go of something. Surrender. Falling can mean to surrender that God can cut you. Or it could mean you are losing control and there's a spirit taking you backwards. You need discernment on this. I'll talk about this even more when you enter a lift. So it's good to know. If you enter into a lift in a, in a, in a dream, if you can remember this the, the next day, look at the floor you pressed, look if the lift is going up or the lift is going down. Very important thing. The floor you pressed, the number of the floor and the direction the lift is going. Number six, flying. Flying. Seven. When you are flying in the dream, it means that you have been given the ability to rise above something. You are rising above something. Flying means spiritual growth and spiritual maturity. That's flying, number seven. Rising above something. Or you're becoming spiritually mature. Number eight. Houses. Oh, you have to look at the type of house. It's important. The type of house is very important. But symbolically, a house in a dream means an aspect of your life or your faith. An aspect of your life or your faith. A house is either life or faith. So the context of the dream will determine the meaning of the house. If you're moving into a new house, it means something new is coming or there is change coming in your, in your life. If you're moving into a new house, you see a big, wonderful white house with full of furniture. Something good is coming to your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. You know there are many examples I can give. If you see yourself in a car, then suddenly you're riding a bicycle. Those are demons of witchcraft taking you back. And you go to Gary, suddenly you dream of a Jew as a Nasana, when I'm going to my Amuka, Kurudisha Shimalavandu, Nashikami. God is good. Then also, different rooms in the house mean different things. So in a house, you must note. Different rooms mean different things. If you yourself, see yourself in the kitchen, you see yourself in the master bedroom, you see yourself in the toilet, you see yourself in the sitting room, they all mean different. You see yourself at the front door. At the front door, it means there's something in your future. If you see yourself at the back door, it means there is something from your past. The kitchen means the place of blessing. The kitchen means the place of blessing. Hallelujah. If you see your childhood home, it means something from your past needs to be solved. Huh? Huh? At your childhood house, 
nyumba yako huu ile ya nini huko god is good if you see the house your childhood home you are seeing a dream this the house i grew up in it indicates something from your past from your past that needs to be resolved or dissolved number 9 losing your cell phone your id your wallet losing your cell phone your id your wallet or a pass this means that you may be losing your sense of direction you are calling your purpose your career is at risk when you lose your wallet your id your cell phone your, your um, 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 yes cell phone id wallet or your pass i'm summarizing thank you it also means that you don't know who you are in christ and the devil is taking advantage Amen. The devil is stealing your identity in the spirit. Number 10. When you find yourself lost, late or unprepared. Lost, late or unprepared. This dream means that you need to pay attention not to miss a move of God. When you see you are late, you are lost, you are unprepared, it means that God is doing something in your life and you are not paying attention. You will miss a move of God. When you see yourself running slowly in a dream, number 11. It means there's a demon of delay fighting you. A spirit of delay is fighting you. You are trying to run in the dream and just can't run. There's a spirit of delay that is fighting you. When you see your teeth are falling, meno inatoka. Amujiwa na meno inatoka. May the Lord open your dream life. Hallelujah. Yes, it symbolizes a lack of understanding. Your need for wisdom. A lack of understanding and for wisdom or something is off in your walk with God. Kuna mali ushikanishi. Now, this one I'll enjoy a bit. The type of tooth you lose in the dream is important. <laughs> yes. Yes, you have front teeth it means you have taken up something that is beyond your capacity that is why if you have a dream you see a child with front teeth it means you are pushing your dream too fast i should write a book eh? if you are losing your wisdom tooth it means you are losing wisdom in a particular area area of your life Hallelujah. Chani ruke. Number 15, the bathroom or toilet. Ukioto kwa kwacho ama kwa bath. This means deliverance. Getting rid of something in your life. And if you see a public toilet, it means God is calling you to be vulnerable that he may deliver you. A dirty toilet means you have unresolved deliverance issues in your life. Now, in dreams people had to smell things, but if you smell a bathroom in your dream, you need the fire of God to enter your life. The Lord is calling your attention to something. Hallelujah. Amen. If you see a cloth in a bathroom or a clock on the wall in the bathroom the lord is telling you to let go of something to go together good now when you see yourself taking a test now these dreams can be corrected eh? you can be taking a test and you are late 
God is good. So you're taking a test, you must look. Number one, look at the level of education you're taking the test. Are you in a primary school? Are you in a secondary school? Are you in a university? The level of test determines the level of promotion. If you see yourself in your primary school doing a test, it means there are some primary issues in your life God has not dealt with. You're dealing with issues that are still very low in your life. There's a test you have not passed. The first test of your promotion, you are yet to pass. So the school you're in determines the test. Now, taking a test means preparation for some kind of advancement and promotion. It's God preparing you for advancement and promotion. Hey, you can time to go say animals. Number 14, snakes. Snakes in a dream. Same two query. Snakes mean witchcraft. Demonic possession. A curse. Theft. Hallelujah. Seeing a snake is an alert from the Lord to search with the Holy Spirit. It's not a dream you take lightly. A snake can mean also a lie in your life. There is a lie at work in your life or a lie trying to attach itself to you. A lie in your life or a lie trying to attach itself to you or you believe a lie and that lie is harming you. That is what a snake means. God is good. Hallelujah. Send me a information. The other things I've not mentioned, they are numbers in dreams, but numbers are based on biblical inter interpretation and they are tied to the context of the dream. Are we together? There are colors in dreams, there are names, there are various animals, there are many things I've not mentioned. I've just given what is common. What have I forgotten that is common? Eh? Trees more often than not mean things that are old. Think, eh? Oh, trains. Let me see my trees. Michael gave Zuri. Eh, hallelujah. God is good. You see yourself in an aeroplane. An aeroplane um, comes, comes under the category of cars and vehicles. A uh, category of cars and vehicles. A train means, of course, carrying is a big move. Normally, it's a big move of God. Carrying very many things. A train is a big anointing that is moving. That's a train. Slow but sure. An aeroplane is the Lord opening up new territories, new doors. Also, a train and an, an, an aircraft means an international assignment. If you are in ministry, it's international anointing. Are we together? If you are in business, it means you have a global business. God is good. Hallelujah. Eh? Water bodies symbolize a few things. Water bodies, one can symbolize, it depends how they are, it can symbolize trouble, burdens, and trials, trials, secrets. It depends with the context or purification. Airports is preparation for a move. At times, also an airport can symbolize. It depends. Are you in the airport with a lost passport? Are you in the airport with a lost nini? What are you in the airport with? Hallelujah. God is good. Those of our dreams have layers and have, they, have, they have got what? Now. Oh, trees. When you see a tree, a tree more often than not is a generational issue. Something that has been there for a long time. That's a tree. Eh? Food. Food, it depends what type of food. If you're eating rotten food, you're eating rotten food, that is demonic. That is a food covenant. Are you together? If you're eating good food, eat it. I'm serious. The devil can't give you good food. So, superstitiously, people listen to that if you see yourself eating meat, meat means death. No, 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 no. No way. When you eat meat in a dream, don't rebuke meat. You can't be eating meat in real life. Then you are a vegetarian in the dreams. 
All of us will eat meat, will fail. How do you read my cow? But people believe that other people believe. So you have to look at the context or context of the dream. Number one, the type of food you are eating. Then number two, you have to look at who you are eating with. Very important, who you are eating with. Remember, dream context is everything at the end of the day. When you dream context is everything. So what I'm giving you here is general, but there's context. There is relative context in every single dream. So you might find that the person you're eating with, you're eating good food, but for the person who died. So now there we look at the context. The context now will make us look at the next layer of the dream. Does it mean that there is a blessing this person never let go? That by prayer I can, re I can receive, that's why I'm eating with them. Or does it mean they're trying to covenant me? Are you together? But more often than not, food covenants in dreams come from, you look at the type of food. There's always something about the type of food. Always something about the type of food. Hallelujah. But again, go back to two things. The scripture and what? Your fellowship with the Holy Spirit. What I've given you is general. So also don't sit at home with these notes. Now, Kai wants to say, okay. Ask the Holy Spirit. I've just given you a small guideline. Amen. I've given you a small interpretation of dreams is a charism of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost gives it to you as a gift. So what I've given you is basically from my own interpretation of what the Holy Ghost has told me over the years is what I've shared with you. Amen. So the devil's work is to fight you in your dreams. That's the devil's plan. Is to steal from you when you sleep. The Bible says, give me Psalms, the last uh, Psalm 127. Give me Passion Translation and we'll pray with this. Eh? Again, it depends who you are getting married to. Where is the wedding? If you are a married woman, um, I'm, I'm seeing yourself at a wedding. You see, that's why I ask, how do you relate to the dream? So I'll wake up and say, I'm already married. Why am I doing another wedding? So I need to ask the Holy Spirit questions. Is it the Lord is trying to tell me? Because generally weddings mean, cele mean, cele mean, a cele mean a celebration. Meaning that something good is coming. More often than not. So there's a chance that you may see a, a wedding and it's not a wedding. It is good news is coming. But also a wedding can be a covenant. So it's good to discern who am I getting married to. Hallelujah. God is good. Kume manautanga. Uh -huh. Yes. Choose his faith, yes. When you dream without shoes, it means that your faith is under attack. Amen. On Sunday, I'll teach something. On Sunday, I'll teach about um, 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 how to know a dream is from God. And the last thing I'll teach you on Sunday about a dream from God is that every dream from God must end with a line of hope. We are together. Every God dream ends with a line of hope. So even though you see snakes, you have no shoes, you see you have failed an exam or anything, God does not give you a dream to fail. If you look at every dream in the Bible, even the dream for Neb Nebuchadnezzar, there was a chance for him to change. So every dream that is from God, every God kind of dream has a line of hope at the end. So if I wake up and I see, I'm trying maybe to do something, and I'm running and I don't have shoes, I have to stop and realize what is God telling me. He's telling me that I need to go build my faith. I build my faith. Are you together? If I pray and I see that I'm walking in town and I'm, and I'm uh, naked, it means what? God is telling me, be careful. Something wants to put you to shame. Pray about it. Am I making sense? So every dream from God has got a line of hope at the end. I'll teach that on Sunday. Amen? Sawa, sawa. Yes. So that Moses took a sana. Amen. Uliona nyoka jana. No. God won't give you a dream you can't do anything about. Any dream God gives you, you can do something about it. You have the power to say no, the power to say yes. Every dream you have, if you can't interpret a dream, basic rule of engagement, get up. Tell God what is divine from you, I receive. What needs not to proceed into this realm, I rebuke. What I don't understand, reveal. Simple prayer. Can I repeat? I repeat. Yes. What is not of you that should not come to pass, do what? Stop. What is of you that should come to pass, I receive. Hallelujah. What I don't know, give me the revelation to understand. If you. So what you've done, you've covered. 
You've seen yourself eating food. You're telling God, if it's a covenant, I rebuke the covenant. If it is a blessing, I accept it. And what I don't know, reveal to me. That's the first prayer after a dream. Then you move to paper two. Ilipia usiombe a dream six months after. Usiomangi niliona kwa ndoto. You remember Nebuchadnezzar? Not doing something about the dream can bring that negative thing to pass. So God doesn't show you because it's bad. So don't panic. Amen. But Sunday I'll teach more. Hallelujah. Psalm 107 it says, it's really senseless, the senseless to work so hard from early morning till late at night. Toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. God can provide for his lovers even while they sleep. Hallelujah. The purpose of a dream is the Lord providing for you while you sleep. Tonight I want us to pray for every impartation that the Lord has released over your life while you sleep. That you woke up and you have no memory. You don't remember at all. There are some of you here you don't remember your dreams. Amen. You dream you have no, you have no memory. There are things the Lord has given you while you sleep. And tonight we want to call them in the, in the name of Jesus. It says God can provide for his lovers even while they sleep. Tonight we are saying whatever the enemy has taken from me, he must bring back sevenfold. And the things the devil has stolen from me in my dreams. The Bible says where there are no visions, people do what? Perish. The devil knows absent of a dream, you will perish. Tonight, by the power that rose Christ from the dead, we are calling a restoration. We are calling sevenfold for the impartation that was given to us. The positioning that the Lord gave you in a dream and the devil stole. The inspiration the Lord gave you in a dream and the devil stole. Today we want to claim those things because the Lord released them. But the devil stole them. So because you don't know, you are praying over a thing that the Lord already gave you. You are praying over a thing that God already answered you. Today we are telling in the name of Jesus that the thief has to be caught and to bring back everything the Lord has given us while we were asleep. We are calling for the things that were taken in our sleep in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.